The year is 2048. Machine intelligence have now reached a human level. Digital minds now perform most of the work that was previously done by us humans. And equipped with robotic bodies, machines now also substitute for human physical labor. In fact, us humans only remain competitive in the areas where consumers prefer the work done by a human and not a machine due to some non-pragmatic reasons. For instance, we might prefer a musician or an actress to be a human and not a machine. So who here thinks that this future scenario is likely? Congratulations. For a few moments there, you guys were thinking like futurists. This particular futuristic scenario is based on the work by uh, a famous futurist, Nick Bostrom, who is currently based at the University of Oxford. In one of his studies, he found that leading technology experts, in fact, think that this scenario will become our reality by the year 2040 with 50% likelihood. My co-author Mike Hyman and I surveyed academics in the field of business. And we found that they think that there is a, about 40% likelihood of this happening by the year of 2050. Now, you don't actually need to be an academic in order to ponder different alternative futures. In fact, it is a learnable skill that all of us can learn. Some science popularizers were advocating for futurizing technology and sciences and incorporating futurology elements into our theories, research, and teaching. Nowadays, we are facing dramatic technological changes in a number of different fields, in nanotechnology, in information technology, robotics, genetics, and many others. My sound. Oh, great. Those changes are actually exponential. And the problem is that our human intuitions were refined in the kind of environment that rewarded very simple linear projections. Think, for instance, about this prehistoric hunter who is aiming with a spear towards the future location of a fleeing animal. And this type of simple linear projection is something that comes to us very naturally and easily. What comes to us much harder is thinking about the full system change. And to do that, we need to adopt a mindset of professional futurists. What it means, it means thinking about three different types of futures. There are possible, probable, and desirable futures. And we need to think about that uh, in about 5 to 30 years time horizon perspective. And we need to think about those futures in a systematic way, which means we need to do it in an organized, structured manner, and we need to do it methodically. And there are, in fact, many, many methods for doing that. There are scenarios, there are these very rigorous, detailed plots, there is role action plane, including live role action plane, which includes participants who basically immerse themselves in this futuristic world, and they get to live in the future for a few days. And there is many, many other techniques that I'm not mentioning, like, for instance, technology road mapping and the Delphi method. And at this point, you might be thinking, well, great. I suppose very smart people in the um, you know, forward-thinking companies are utilizing those types of techniques all the time. Because small and large businesses, they shape the economic landscape that we all live in. And they make hundreds, thousands of daily decisions that impact all of our lives. And yet, the evidence suggests that outside of just a few, just a handful of very large visionary brands, industry is not really engaging 
in the systematic thinking about various plausible futures. It could be because they're really not trained to think like the futurists. Today, unless you go to school to get a very advanced degree in philosophy or specifically in the future studies, it is very likely that you would not be exposed to any type of futurology thinking and futurology tools. So there is this organization, it's called Acceleration Studies Foundation. And um, it's a global organization, non-profit organization. And one of the things that they do is they maintain this global list of all educational programs that are in some way related to futurology and future studies. And so what they note is that um, there is just, just a few of programs like that uh, for the undergraduate students globally. As an example, I took the United States, and they report that there is four universities, but there is a futurology center on campus that is working to incorporate some of the future studies into their curriculum. There is one university but where there is a required mandatory course in the future studies for the undergraduate students. And they also list one more online module, but they say that the professor who is teaching this course is now retired. So, uh, after the graduation, it doesn't really get much better for the industry folks. They lack the tools to think and plan for these long-term futures. For instance, a recent meta-analysis uh, found that about 14% of the studies that utilize future scenarios come from the management and business sources. So that's a really small proportion. I myself analyzed a leading future studies journal, and I looked at the data for the past 10 years, a decade worth of publications, and I was able to only find uh, fewer than 70 studies that in some way uh, were related to management and marketing and had some sort of relation to the business practices. And fewer than half of those, less than 41%, had any sort of practical advice or practical implications that industry people could actually take and utilize in their daily practices. So to sum this up, we are doing a very poor job thinking about the possible and the probable futures. And we really need to do better. However, wait, there is actually more. It's not enough for us to simply think about the various possible and probable futures. It's not enough to just think what might happen. What is also important is to think what you want to happen. If you go back to my original futuristic scenario, if you think about um, the robotic uh, technology and digital minds now being common in the workplace, ask yourself, is this the kind of future that you find desirable? On my end, I can tell you that when my husband and I look at the pile of dirty dishes in the sink in the evening, we look at each other and we say, I cannot wait for those robots to get here. I like this quote. It's not about just predicting what the future will be, but about shaping it into the future we want to be. So it's not enough to just think about different alternative futures and their consequences. It is important to also think what kind of future various stakeholders actually want to happen. And I have good news. The good news are we have the capabilities to do so. Today, globally, many, many companies are utilizing marketing research to find what, if our, what, what is our, for instance, preferred flavor of gum, or what kind of color of the table napkin is the most pleasing to the eye. And managers in those companies, they routinely track consumer preferences, and they track these internal and external signals despite very high uncertainty. And in good news for us, these same tools that I used routinely can also be used in order to find out what are humanity's preferences for the future. So instead of finding out the ideal color of the napkin, we can actually find what kind of values humans hold close and dear, and we can track those ever-changing values and desires, 
And we can make sure that we shape the future into something that is reflective of humanity's preferences. When I was serving business academics, one of them said something that really stuck with me up till this day. I am cynical in the belief that great technology will improve our lives simply because the intelligence is there to create it. Financial interests go a long way in determining what will eventually make it to market. Now, this is a little depressing, if you think of it. However, I want to remind you that these are financial interests of the business people, who too can be trained to think like the futurists. For instance, they can learn to use this wonderful, or well, in my book, uh, futures wheel, where you and your team start with some sort of event that you think is likely to happen in the future. And you think of various primary impacts of that event, and for each primary impact, you think of the secondary impacts. For instance, if your main event is that advances in genetic technology will significantly extend human lifespan, one of the primary effects of that could be, well, overpopulation, and one of the secondary effects of that could be increased demand in sustainable products and sustainable living solutions. So you think about those multiple effects, and then you start envisioning how some of the primary effects and secondary effects are connected to each other, and you start seeing how this whole picture of this very complex future starts emerging before your eyes. And if you're like me, and you think that this is kind of fun, that you might also appreciate this very neat futures polygon, and what's happening here is for each of those primary effects, you're thinking about how quickly this thing will happen. Will it take two, five, ten, maybe more years for this particular event to occur? And adding this temporal perspective to your analysis helps you to plan and prepare first for the most urgent events. So we all can be futurists, all of us really. If you're an educator, what you can do is to incorporate these and many much more sophisticated techniques into your curriculum. If you are a business leader, if you are a government employee, if you are simply somebody who is bored on their daily commute and doesn't know how to kill time, one of the things you can do is to learn the futuristic type of thinking and the futurology tools and incorporate them into your daily professional life. This way, instead of just letting the future happen to us, driven by someone else's financial interests. What we can do is we can ask, first of all, what is technologically possible? What kind of technology is likely to occur and happen to us in the future? And secondly, what is in humanity's best interest? And what do you think will benefit the future generations most? Thank you.